Hi, it's Mike Stevenson. In today's video, we're going to be doing another video about um, API management. So we're going to talk about the new preview load balancer feature and how that can help us in the solutions that we need to build. So if you imagine a scenario here that I've seen quite a few times where we've got an API being built in function apps, we've got Cosmos here as the, the back end. So one of the good things with Cosmos is that you've got um, you know, various geo replication options so you can spread the data across multiple regions. Cosmos has a really good um, sort of geo story. Um, when it comes to function apps, they'll be in that back end. These are very regional, so they're going to be deployed in one Azure region. And what happens is it's quite common people might deploy, say you deploy two function apps um, either you know whether it be slots or um, on multiple apps or in different data centers, you want to build that um, kind of active, active or active passive scenario where you can route traffic through the, the different function apps, but they can you know read from the Cosmos DB where it's got a much better sort of um, geo replication story out of the box. Now, what quite often would happen is people would put front door in front of this kind of architecture. And then in front door, you have these back end pools. Um, and that gives you a good way of routing traffic based on different scenarios. And then these applications send in data in. They don't really know how they get data from Cosmos DB. It's just routing in a way that you have control over with front door now. With API management, obviously, in, in that previous architecture, the problem is front door gives you that um, that entry point, the CDN features, and but it doesn't give you the advanced API features that API management has. So there's a little bit of overlap between what they do, but it's quite often that people might have front door with APIM sat back behind it. Now, the challenge is that in APIM, the way you would route across two different backends for your API would be different. So the way you would do it typically is shown up at the top here. So in your policy, you would be defining an API and you'd have something like a choose here where I've said something like, um, if I wanted to have, say, an active passive, I would have a, something like a variable of use, use primary. And if it was... Um, false if it was true sorry i'd use app two otherwise i would use app one by default if ever you needed to do a scenario um like running you know running the deployments you needed to flip over you could control it in the policy but there's a couple of challenges here so the back end um wouldn't support active active in that scenario you'd have to do some kind of randomization some kind of um round robin or something you'd implement in your policy which is going to be a bit of a pain to maintain but also um if i had multiple apis calling those back ends um i'm going to have to manage that in multiple places so it's, it's just not the best um way of managing it so it's great to see this new feature coming out where when you configure a back end in apim you're going to be able to configure um services and within it so here's an example where I'm going to configure a back end. It's going to be a load balancer for multiple back ends. There's URLs, and then you've got some services here that you can configure. And that'll give you options to do more advanced things around how you would um, flip between those different apps. Now, if we take a look at uh, the announcement here, so we've got the, you know, the load balancer announcement. Um, create backend pools and add multiple backends for an API and implement load balancing across that. You can also include this with things like the circuit breaker feature. So that could be a way you could configure um think you know one app have uh, one of those apps having a problem you can control going over to the other one and things like that. So it's good to see you know this preview feature combined with the other feature they're starting to add more advanced scenarios for the back end feature in um, APIM. So if we jump down to the load balancer here, we'll just have a look at a couple of things. So currently, note at the top here, the back end pool supports round robin load balancing across those back ends that you configure. 
um, so we can spread the load, we can shift the load from one back end to another for a blue-green scenario. Um, now here's the example of the, the bicep script we were looking at on my whiteboard before where I'm configuring the back end. And there's a point of note just down here about it being for um, developer and premium tiers. Um, a couple of other things to, to watch. So I'm, I'm kind of questioning maybe that doesn't support standard as well. It doesn't really say explicitly. So I guess, I guess as we go towards GA for this and more info comes out, it'll be one to keep an eye on. But uh, yeah, so the new, you know, the new load balancer feature. So more good features coming in APIM. I think um, this one doesn't look like it's available in the portal yet. So I guess that'll be one of the next steps in the preview is to add portal support as well as um, ARM and API. That was the same as um, on the circuit breaker feature. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick video today, just talking a little bit about that feature and, and why you would want to use it and where it might help you. Um, thanks for listening. Take care.